I'm so excited to jump into this new series. We've named this series Traction, and I didn't think about it until about 30 seconds ago, but I think this is kind of like all the way a guy's uh, title, and I apologize to the females, but just a random question. I know you guys never have done this before, but is there anybody in here that maybe you were in a parking lot, maybe at a mall late at night, it was empty, there was no one out there, and you just thought, let me see if I could spin my back wheels out and just spin around just to look. Anybody at all? Am, am I the only? All the guys were like, yeah. <laughs> How many times did you get around? <laughs> I went around twice. I mean, it, shh, I'll tell my mom. <laughs> but this concept of traction is basically this, that tires on a car, if they don't have grip on the ground or the gravel or the road that they're driving on, the wheels will spin, but you won't make any progress. You've heard that phrase before, you're spinning your wheels. You've heard that before, right? What that means is you're exerting a lot of energy, you're doing a lot of work, but you're not making much progress. You're, you're, you're doing what you need to be doing, but you're not going where you need to go. And I find sometimes our spiritual faith can be like that. We come to church every single Sunday and we're in Bible study or a small group, we're on dream team. We're, we're doing all these things. We're doing, doing, doing. But when we look up, we can't truly say, I'm further along in my faith than I used to be. I'm more like Christ than I used to be. I, I'm growing in my faith. Let me tell you something. God said in his word that our faith should be from glory to glory to glory. We should always be growing in Christ. You've heard me say this again, and I will continue to say this. Do not make church something that you have on a to-do list. You know, there's just certain things that good people do, and church is one of those. So let me just tick off church right after budget and right after pay my taxes. And as long as I have those, good, I'm okay. No, no, no. You should demand results from your encounter with God. If he is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords, the Bible says you should not leave the same way that you came. And we're believing that over this next month, God will teach us how to make progress, how to have spiritual momentum in our lives. I don't know about you, but I'm all the way excited about 2013. I believe that God is going to move in a mighty way. I know I'm the only one because no one's shouting at me, but that's all right. I believe that God is going to move in a mighty way this year. And this is what I believe. I believe that we're going to hit this year running. I'm not limping into 2013. I'm not getting dragged into 2013. I'm not getting carried into 2013. I am running with faith, intentional knowing that my God is going to provide according to his riches and mercy. I'm not sure if you are new to town, but in 2010, we had the, the, the snowstorm, the blizzard of a lifetime. Anybody remember that? It, oh, everybody was in it. It was miserable. What made it so miserable is, one, nobody warned us, and two, it was right at rush hour, right at the end of the, you remember that? Five o'clock, we're heading home from work, and the skies open up, and I know it's not true, but I could just imagine God like, ha, ha. <laughs> if I was God, that's what I would have done. But I remember it was about five o'clock, and it started snowing, and I was about 20 minutes away from my house. It was a 20-minute trip from where I was, I was on 695, to get to my house. And as we were going and I saw this snow coming down, I'm just like, man, God, get me home. And sure enough, the car next to me, their wheels started to spin a little bit and the truck started to go like this. And before you know it, we were stuck in the snow. No one had any grip. No one had any traction. I had a four-wheel car, so I was able to move. But that no matter where I went, there were blocked roads. It took me three and a half hours to make a 20-minute trip. I was dying. I was over uh, by Sinai Hospital. And if you know that area or Northern Parkway, there's a lot of hills and different things like that. And MTA buses were blocking the road. So people were trying to take the back roads. And I was going up this one hill and people had jumped out and were helping someone push their car up. And as they were pushing that car up, another car was sliding back down. And I mean, it was just chaos. Nobody could move from anywhere. They were pretty much trapped. And I remember finally I, I got on 83 and I was trying to get out. And as I was on 83, I noticed that there were cars lining the side of the road that people had either ran out of gas 
or they just abandon their cars. They got someone with a truck to say, hey, come pick me up. I'm going to pick this up some other time. I am frustrated. I do not feel like fighting this weather anymore. What happens after a matter of time of spinning your wheels and not making any progress, you get frustrated and you throw in the towel. My prayer this year is that nobody in this church gets frustrated with their faith, leaves it on the side of the road and jumps onto somebody else's life. So you know what, I'm not believing that God is going to do this anymore, so I'm just going to attach myself to you and whatever will be, will be. No, 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 no. God has given us, you know, the, the, the government trucks, they have those spike tires or they have the chains on their tires and they're driving by. I'm believing that God's going to give us traction this year so that we see tangible progress to our faith. Amen? So we're going to jump into that today. And today I'm talking about being positioned for miracles. Being positioned for miracles. The first thing that I believe that brings traction to our lives as Christians is prayer. When we pray, when we make ourselves a people of prayer, a church of prayer, we will find that we will make progress in all that God has for us. Not only that, though, prayer positions us to receive miracles. If you remember, as we're following this story about this man who was crippled, it says that he was placed at the gate called Beautiful, where they went in and out to the place of prayer every single day. This man was placed in the place of prayer every single day, and because he was in that location, he was in the right place at the right time to receive the blessings of God. One of the things we must understand is that prayer positions us. Write that down. If you're taking notes in your worship guide, write down get into position. If you're not taking notes in your worship guide, write this down. It's a new year, a new start. Take notes in church. Get into position. It is vital that we recognize that prayer is the position of miracles. In 1 Kings chapter 18, there's this story about this prophet named Elijah and that time, the nation of Israel, they had turned away from God. So God says, fine, if you don't want to honor me, then it's just not going to rain. You don't worship God, you don't eat. So <laughs> that's Bible right there. <laughs> but there was famine. It did not rain for three years. And then finally God called the prophet Elijah and he said, okay, go tell them I'm going to release my rain. And Elijah went and he said, hey, God is going to move. He's going to change. It's going to be a new season. He's going to release his reign. And then after he told them that, it says that he went up to the mountain and he began to pray. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 42, it says this. It says, so Ahab went off to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel, bent down to the ground, and put his face between his knees. You ever want to know what the position of miracles looks like? It's that right there. It's on your knees and your face to the ground. That is where we are when we receive all that God has for us. I think it's so interesting. It says Ahab and other people said they went off eating, they went off drinking, they went off celebrating, but Elijah knew where the power resides. It's so important that we don't see prayer just as a religious duty. That we don't just see prayer as an exercise that we do that make God, makes God happy or any, even as, you know, something that, that's inconsequential that we're supposed to do. But that we see prayer as the tool that God has given us that literally releases heaven here on earth. You may not realize this, but when you pray, you are in position to receive all that heaven has for you. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says this, and you may be familiar with this verse, but it says this. It says, if destiny harvest, somebody say, that's me, who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive his sin and heal their land. God literally said, if you as a people would begin to pray, I'm going to hear from heaven and release what heaven has for you in your life. I heard my father preached a phenomenal message last Sunday. 
I also heard that he made fun of my skinny jeans and bow ties and that you guys actually laughed and didn't stick up for me. That's all right. Next week I'm preaching about hell. But anyway. <laughs> but I remember I heard him say that last week that he was talking about many different voices that come into our lives. And you may not know this. There's a lot of different voices that we hear. One of my greatest irritations is when people talk about haters. People always want to say, you know, I got haters and all this other kind of stuff. You'll never hear me preach about haters. Here's, here's what I feel about haters. If you have time to listen to haters, you're not busy enough. <laughs> if you have time to post Facebook statuses and Twitter statuses about what your haters are saying about you, come talk to me. I will find something for you to do with your life. <laughs> so you don't got to worry about all that foolishness. I don't even... Anyway, all that to say that there's many different voices that are speaking, but what we may not realize is one of those voices that are speaking is heaven. Heaven is speaking over our lives, and this is what God says. He said when we pray, he is able to hear from heaven. Now, I don't believe that God is deaf. I don't believe that God has hearing aids. I don't believe that God has hearing problems. But for some reason, our prayer releases God to hear from heaven. This is what I believe. The Bible says God's given us dominion. He's given us authority here on earth. And there's so many promises. There's so many things that God desires to do in our lives. But he can't do it unless we release him to do it. And as soon as we declare, God, I'm believing that as it is in heaven, you're going to do it in my life. God is like, that's exactly what I've been waiting to hear. Go ahead and respond to him because he's believing according to my word. It is so important that we realize the power in prayer. You know, the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 that the church came together, and this was actually right after this story. They were arrested. They were thrown into prison, and it says the church began to pray. And they said, Lord, consider their threats. Consider the financial cliff and the economic problems and the violence in schools. God, consider all that's going on, but God, stretch out your hand to heal. God, perform signs and miracles. God, cover our lives. And the most miraculous thing happened. It says that the building where they were began to shake, that there was a physical reaction to a spiritual shift, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't be so spiritual and know so much Bible that you don't get shocked by that every time you hear it. Heaven invades earth. When we pray, God imposes his will on this earth, and we have the power to release his will here on earth. The disciples said to the Lord, they said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. And you're familiar with that passage, the Lord's Prayer. He said, this is how you ought to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Here's the important part. It says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it already is in heaven. 